Yeah, we've been rolling. Hey guys! So today is going to be the second episode of Best Thing Jackie's Ever Eaten. And today we are going to be going to Moody Rooster in Thousand Oaks. And Moody Rooster is a family owned restaurant. It's a farm to table restaurant and so everything farm to table restaurant and so they have a little board inside um, where it shows what farm they got all their meat from or their vegetables and the menu changes almost monthly or sometimes weekly depending on what's in season and what's not and I kid you not when I say that I've never had anything bad there and I feel like that's gonna be like a running theme with these restaurants but there's also a reason why these are the best things I've ever eaten. I'm just so excited for you guys to see the food and meet the family and yeah it's gonna be amazing. We're here. Okay so they have outdoor seating that they kind of converted into this like whole you know shopping area they just put tables everywhere. I'm so excited so let's go get our table and start eating. Come on. So I wanted to literally order everything off the menu to show you guys how good everything is, but I ordered just a few of my favorite things today. First, we're gonna start off with their persimmon salad, and this salad changes monthly depending on what fruit is in season. So sometimes it's orange, sometimes it's strawberry, um, sometimes it was peach, and now it's persimmon. And then we got a steak tartare, which you guys have definitely seen all over my Instagram. Um, and then we are also getting their whole chicken, which I've never ordered just like roasted chicken in a restaurant before. And this is like hands down the best chicken I have ever had. My mom hates chicken and she will eat this entire chicken. Um, and then we also got their crispy gnocchi, which is like their signature dish. It is one of a kind. I have never seen it at another restaurant before. And they're just standard potato gnocchi, but they're crispy on the outside. And then there's cheese fondue, which is, it's, oh, it's so good. I can't wait for you guys to see. And everything that they plate and put out is just like so aesthetically pleasing and beautiful. So let's wait. All right, so you guys, I am finally with head chef of Moody Rooster. Colin Cornell. And you guys are a farm to table restaurant, so what made you, you know, stand out from other restaurants and try to do more sustainable food and stuff like that? Well, it's what I've always practiced as being a chef. Um, uh, one, I love being a chef. Uh, and about 20 years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago, I started cooking and I really wanted to. I wanted to do it the right way. So um, this one restaurant in LA called Luke's had this um, this pastry chef and I, I, I got to know her and she used to go to the farmer's market all the time in Santa Monica. So I asked her, I said, hey, could you take me to the farmer's market and teach me how to buy from farmers basically? She said, yeah, no problem. So she brought me down there and from that point on, I've always bought all my vegetables from local, local farmers. So there's a lot of farms up here that, that I get to buy from. So there's a big farmer's market here on Sunday that I, I buy probably like 60, 70 percent of my vegetables from. And then I have relationships from the farm, the farmers down in Santa Monica that some of them will deliver to me or I get it in different ways, you know. And they're, they all just grow great stuff. And if you cook with great ingredients, your food is most likely going to taste Exactly. Really good. How often do you think that you change the menu to add some new seasonal stuff into it? Things that don't rely on the seasons. With the enoki, we use cherry tomatoes, but my, one of my farmers that I buy from Country Fresh, they grow cherry tomatoes year round, luckily enough, being in Southern California. So we're, we get that luxury of buying such, you know, that kind of stuff all year round when other people in the United States don't. What made you want to become a chef, or what's kind of your history of becoming to where you are now? Well, like you said earlier, I, as soon as I got out of high school, I, I went into graphics art school. And um, I had a best friend who um, went to uh, uh, CCA up in San Francisco. It's no longer there. Um, but he went up there. I was just so interested in it. 
and everything, like from the knives to how you cook things and thing, you know, just everything. I just always ask him questions. And then one day he was like, because you want to be a, you want to start cooking. I'm like, no, you know, I'm, I'm a graphic designer. He's like, he goes, he goes, listen, he goes, I, he just became chef at this restaurant. Um, so he calls me up, he goes, I had a pantry cook not show up. And I, he goes, come on down. I'm like, no, 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 goes, come on, I need you. I'm like, all right, fine. So I go down there and he, I, I mean, I, I remember him trying to put on the chef coat for me. I'm like, how the hell do you put on a chef coat, you know? And so he sits there and does it and the, and the place is busy. So he pushes me out into the line. I get next to this guy, this guy shows me how to do about six different dishes. And he goes, just do them like this as fast as you can whenever they call out for it. Okay, sat there, the whole night went through. I had such an adrenaline rush. I said, I'm doing this the rest of my life. Wow. It, was, it, was, it was such a rush, I loved it. That's honestly such a an interesting story where most people are like, oh, I wanted to be a chef since I was little, but you kind of were thrown into it and now that's what you're doing. Yeah, I was always, I always wanted my own restaurant. That, that was the goal. Um, and in fact, I felt like it took too long, but Vicky and I being together, um, you know, uh, her father actually made a plan for us. And, you know, he's like, buy a house. Um, so I got a job at the Lobster Restaurant as a head chef where I was able to get, you know, a nice salary for once, you know, because <laughs> usually you don't make any money being a chef <laughs> or, you know, cooking it was. And um, so we got that. We were able to buy a house. So we bought a house and we built equity. And then he's like, all right, now you get the equity loan. And then, so that's what we did. We put our house up and just went and we got lucky. We found this space. Me and my father are on here every single day just putting this place together the best way we could to make it, you know, pass all the codes and everything in order to open up as a restaurant. And so, yes, I wanted my own restaurant and being local. And my wife has been in the business since she was 16 also. And we worked together many times. So, and, and I yeah. love working with her. So, I mean, Vicky's uh, the first thing people see when they walk right. in here. So, but it's I, not it's not a bad view. I, I, I feel like we're I feel like we're a great one-two punch. Oh, 100 really percent. Yeah. This is a seasonal thing. This is the way you asked me before. How do we make up food to change seasonally? One is I walk through the farmers market and see what's available. I buy it and then I go, okay, now we got to do something. Like that. <laughs> so um, right now, persimmons has hit the market. So and then there's another farm out here called Verney, Verney, something like that. And they have great dried fruit. So they have these red flame raisins that I thought would work really well in here. Um, and then we use uh, pecans also, toasted, little herb, you know, we, we dust them with herbs, and then wild arugula. So it really comes from just. Um, the seasonality of this particular fruit to make this out. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I post it every time I eat it. Every, every time you come in, you eat it. Explain. Okay. So this is a steak tartare, done in the almost the classical French way. So we have capers. Uh, we have fermented must, uh, mustard that we make in house, um, and then I like to use hanger steak. Hanger steak used to be called the, the butcher's steak because only the butcher would like because it's kind of a tough piece, but it has the most flavor. It hangs near the liver and just has a great beefy flavor to it. And I like the texture of it too, it's a little crunch. Some fresh onions, um, chives, um, Frontiano extra virgin olive oil, and lemon. What's the aioli, is that garlic? Oh, aioli, we make a fresh aioli in house. Well, we make our bread also, so we make a, a fresh sourdough bread with no yeast. We have our own um, starter that we started right before we opened the restaurant, about three and a half years ago, so she's Three and a half years old right now, and we make the bread every day with her. We make an aioli with garlic, um, fresh eggs from the farmers, and um, sunflower oil and little Dijon and garlic. And you guys make your own pickles too, right? We make our own pickles also. These are the best so. pickles ever. I buy like a container every time I come here. I always get an extra container of the pickles. This is made out of potato. You guys saw me making this earlier. Um, we make it out of uh, russet potatoes and just Parmesan flour. And then you, you just, the secret is you don't overwork the dough. You roll it out, we poach it, and we, we put it in ice water to cool it down. Then we dry it up, and then to order, you just put it in a pan and crisp it up. And then we make a Parmesan fondue from Parmesan Reggiano. Oh, so this is our half roasted chicken. This is one of our popular items. Um, Half the year we serve it with uh, red bell pepper, and then half the year we serve it with uh, butternut squash. So we're going to change that real soon because we're switching into winter now. Um, so it's very simple. People ask me if I brine it and do all this stuff to it. I don't. It's all we do is salt and pepper it and cook it in a um, basically a cast iron pan in the oven. We keep it skin side down the whole time, and then when it comes out, we invert it onto the plate. And then we have um, garlic that we slow roast, we call it garlic confit, 
and we still roast it so you can pop out the real garlic and it's really sweet beautiful taste of garlic and it's some fresh thyme really simple what's crazy is everything is so simple like the way that you're explaining it and what you do to it but it's every dish here is better than any place i've ever had it so it just goes to show I mean, how talented you are as a chef that you can do things so simple but so good thank you well, first of all, working with my wife is I prefer it. Like when she shows up during the day, I'm like, oh, I just feel just feels good. I mean, that's the woman of my dreams, you know. Like I married her for a reason, and I love that woman. She just she understands me very well. She really does, because I can sometimes get a little fired up back there, you know. And she just understands how to talk to me. Like okay, you know, she doesn't take anything personal, and she just knows how to keep the kitchen, the whole restaurant rolling. Basically. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm so excited to eat. I can't wait for them to try it. Because <laughs> I know what this tastes like. They don't know what this tastes like. So I'm so excited. I love the salad so much because one, I love fruit and I like fruit in salads. And it kind of has everything in it. So it has fruit, it has like sweetness from the fruit, and it has pomegranate seeds. And then it also has nuts in it, and then it has cheese. So it's like salty, it's sweet, and then there's arugula, and everything just kind of goes so well together. Seems like a pretty good bite. It is so, so, so good. Okay, next. This is my favorite dish at Moody Rooster. I've never had anything like it anywhere else. And I always like to take their homemade pickles, come on the side, and just place that all around like this. And then you have to take a bite with the steak and the pickles all together. Okay. Mm. The pickles are really sweet. And then there's like steak and it's oniony. And the bread is so crispy. I have to finish this. Hold on. So you take gnocchi. And then you take it in the cheese. Nice. Okay. You like cheese. And you like pasta. You like potatoes. And you like things that taste good. And this is like a home run, okay? Everything about this is so good because it's crispy and the cheese is melty. And then the chicken. As you guys heard Colin say, they like slow roast this garlic, so you can just pop it. <laughs> and you take that out, and it's super sweet too, it doesn't taste like garlic. Piece of chicken. And you like smash the garlic. You smash the garlic on there. <laughs> oh my god. I, I can't be taking these little bites anymore. I need to dig into this, so we'll see you guys afterwards. Cheers, my boy. Hmm. Yeah, I've just never had anything like this. Bread, aioli, the combination, delicious. My brain is like trying to process <laughs> what I'm even eating. All right, you guys, I just got home from Moody Rooster and that meal just always hits the perfect spot. It's so homey and comforting and so good. Um, everything was amazing as always. Make sure you go check them out. Moody Rooster and Thousand Oaks, I promise you guys will love it as much as I do. All right, see you later, guys.